happens like clockwork. You spend hours preparing a session, setting up a scene, presenting it for your players. And then they look at you and ask a very simple question, and you give a very basic answer. And with that, you derail half the evening session and ruin all their plans for the evening. It wasn't intentional, you weren't trying to ruin their fun, and you definitely weren't trying to derail the plot. Instead, they ask you a question, but they ask you the wrong question. And because of it, you gave them the wrong answer. Because of that, they made the wrong choices and the wrong decision, and everything went askew. The worst part about it is you could easily avoid the whole damn thing. You simply knew about the rule of zero. The rule of zero is about creating things that don't exist yet in your game. It's not the things that possibly could exist, but haven't been defined yet. And the rule of zero covers how and when you create these things, and under what restrictions. See, the rule of zero recognizes that when players ask you a question, ask you a detail about a location, it's not offhanded. It's not merely curiosity. They have a plan in mind. They have a goal. They have a very short amount of time in order to do things. And so if they are asking for a minor detail, because they need to know specifically what something is. So that our first step is always when a player asks us a detail, to ask the very basic question of why. What do you want to know and why do you want to know it? What do you have planned? This isn't meant to be confrontational, but to be absolutely inquisitive. You want to know exactly what the players have in mind. So if your players are running away from a minotaur, and they ask if there are any columns in the area, don't just automatically describe some columns off in distance in the far side of the room. Ask them what they have planned. Are they planning to climb those columns? Are they planning to push one over? Or they want to hide behind one of them. Don't assume that's an architectural element they're discussing. Assume there's actually a reason why they want those columns. And then ask them what they want. Number two, once you know what the players want, then determine both from the realm of possibility and what you've already defined in your story, whether it should or should not exist. If it should, go ahead and add it. Don't hold back. If the players have a great idea, go with it. They should be absolutely encouraged to be able to do what they want. You know, save in the storytelling elements and let them feel like they have control of the game. But if it shouldn't exist, then tell them outright that it doesn't and why. But step number three, if something does exist, define it. Put it out for the players, give them a basic description of what they're looking for and how they can get it. But if it doesn't exist, give them alternate options. If they're looking for columns to hide behind, but the room is too small for columns, give them other things they might be able to hide behind. Tell them there's rubble nearby, or tell them there are crates that they might be able to get some cover behind. Give them details of anything they might be able to get some cover behind that could exist, even if the columns shouldn't. So that is the basics of the rule of zero. If something should exist and could exist, and the players are interested in it, let it exist. But make sure that it serves the narrative, both for the players and for the dungeon master. Here, let me give you an example. Your party has recently arrived in the town of Bacchus. The town is known and famous for making wine. Everything about the town screams wine. The ancient architecture is covered and festooned with ancient grape leaves and images of people making wine. There are old houses out in front of the town actually made of stacked amphora bots, cemented together with gobs of clay. In the center of the town has a giant fountain dedicated to the ancient god of wine, Bacchus. Everything about it screams wine. Everyone loves the wine here. And the wine here is brilliant. It's uh, so good, in fact, that even its worst dregs are considered the finest wine in all the land. So you present this town to your players, and they're ready to go. As they enter the city, they check in with the guard, let them know they're a group of mercenaries. Proceed to ask a simple question. Is there a smith in town? Now you can give them a basic answer. And with that, the guard turns to you and says, What was that you were asking? A smith? Well, of course we have a smith. What town doesn't have a smith? Yes, sir. Right down that way, past the fountain on Bacchus, and around them for a house. You'll hit it before you see it. I mean, obviously there's a smith in town, because this town needs metalwork. They need to basically make barrels, they need to make hoops, they need to be able to make tools for making wine. It's a simple question and a simple answer. The problem is, that's not really the question they're asking. But the question that your players really want to ask, can we buy weapons in this town? And the answer is, no. You see, when you did your rule of one, you decided the town was dedicated to wine. You also decided to do your rule of two, and know that Bacchus has a, uh, has a secret problem. And the secret problem is that it's been taken over by, by political and religious zealots. Using the excuse that uh, public drunkenness had become an issue, and that several riots and things had overwhelmed the town, a splinter group of the church and a group of politically minded folks banded together and have stamped out all public drunkenness. Anything that beyond being able to consume wine merely for 
both its medicinal and religious benefits. More importantly, acts of public drunkenness, inebriation, and possession of weapons are all high crimes in the area, and only mercenaries like the players themselves are allowed to even have them. And the local smith couldn't make anything bigger than a dagger, even less directed to directly by the Lord Baron himself. Now, the players don't know this, and so by telling them to go off to talk to that smith, they're going to run head first into a smith who's going to deny them. A group of priests are going to show up to ask why they're trying to acquire weapons. A group of guards are suddenly excited by a possible breaching of the rules. The players didn't mean anything, and it's all become a big hassle, which some dungeon masters might agree is the way real life is. But there's a reason why it's called a hassle in real life, because it sucks. The last thing you need to do is break up half your game because you made that simple mistake. So let's try it again. Your players are near town and they ask, is there a smith in town? And you, as the guard captain if you want, ask, why are you asking about a smith, sir? They tell you they want to acquire a longsword for their new squire. In which case, the guard can inform them, weapons, weapons are forbidden in this town. There's no way we could possibly allow anyone to carry arms other than people like yourselves. We expect you to be here and be prepared to defend the town in case uh, Drunken Riot breaks out, of course, like it did like last year. Yes, in fact, uh, you all probably be conscripted at least once while you're here in order to make to deal with any drunken rowdies that come around. Bloody cult of Bacchus. Uh, well, uh, the cult, they, uh, they believe in inebriation and drinking and all that. Uh, I think they carry weapons and... The point is, you may have to deal with them. But we need you here to be prepared to put them down. And with just like that, you change things. Not only do you tell them that they can't just go down to Smith and acquire a weapon, but they need to go somewhere else. And in the process, you give a hint on where they can go. Because when you did your Rule 3, you created the Cult of Bacchus. Ancient cult to the wine god who still parties, drinks, and is merry, but also deals in smuggled goods, like smuggling wine out and smuggling in weapons. And now they have an option of where they might be able to find a longsword. And more importantly, you just moved your story along. In any event, now you know the Rule of Zero. Anytime you have a situation where you have not specifically created something in the game and a player asks whether it exists or not, you know to ask them the simple question of why. Then, once they tell you what their motives are, determine whether or not it should exist. And then step three, either give them the details of how they can acquire it, or get the information they need, or give them an alternative knowledge. Your game will move forward faster and quicker, players will feel they have more control in the game, and you'll be able to move your plots along very easily. It's all because you asked a simple question of why. We often say these games are a collaborative effort between Dungeon Master and players. And because of that, you have to be, as a Dungeon Master, prepared to find out what the players need and want, and be able to provide it. With that, we're still on vacation and out here in the wilds of Daytona, enjoying the uh, the weather and uh, and putting together videos in our spare time. I'll try and get out the next video out to you as soon as possible. But in the meantime, good luck and good gaming. <laughs>